Hello everyone, welcome to Grow Your Future. My name is Zah, CEO of Luxland Investments. Today we are joined by Mark, Jade and our blow-in Sarah. <laughs> waiting for that. <laughs> this is going to crank this podcast. Well, well, well welcome everyone. Uh, we apologize that we didn't have a podcast last week. We were, uh, Jade and I were, were, were down and out with the flu and, um, you we know, had we, the man flu. Yeah, we yeah. had the man flu and that, that, that knocked us about for about three or four days, but we're back. You we're are. back, ready to rumble. And, um, we've got our, our blow in. <laughs> Look, can I Ready just say, contribute? next time you can't do the podcast, I'm happy to fill in. Yeah. 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 That's an idea. That's, That's an idea. idea. That's an idea. She Thank can just you. do it on her own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still won't get a word. It'll be so extra. Yeah. Marcus. Yes. So today, the people want to know what we're, what we're talking about the people, tonight. The people, the listeners, the viewers. So tonight we're talking about uh, the power of daily rituals. Um, this is something we're quite big on here at Luxland mm. and at the salon as well and, and, and <laughs> all the other businesses that you guys have and whatnot. And um, I guess the reason why we got this topic this week is because of last week, missing out on the podcast and the way that not just the podcast, but your, your week was affected by even having that one day off and, and a few days off the gym and stuff like that. It just killed us. It put things completely out of whack. So I guess to begin with like how long have you guys been doing like the three of you anyway your daily rituals well i think i think rituals it i mean everyone's got rituals mm -hmm. you know that some sort of uh thing routine that they do every morning every day when they go to work for for me i don't talk about my rituals that that often and i don't i don't really like to talk about it because people actually think i'm making it up like because mm. i'm very very extreme but for the purpose of this podcast like i i'll, I'll go through you know some of my daily rituals and hopefully um our viewers and our listeners can 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 take some value away from it and even if you can do one of them just perform one of those rituals i think it'll add a lot of value to your life and i know it's i've kind of set the bar um amongst our team and our group and you know i've, I've, I've pushed everyone very very hard to 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 get through these rituals but for you listeners out there i think um i think you guys can really benefit from it so I guess get waking up early. Mm. You know that's 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 key for me. Waking up early, and that that's anywhere between five and six six a.m. in the morning. Um, most of the good shit actually happens yeah. within those it's first awesome. couple awesome. of hours. Um, yeah, and it's just it's it's a beautiful thing waking up before the sun gets up. Mm. Beating the sun is even on the weekends. Like it's it's I have to do it seven days a week. You know I'll have my apple cider vinegar. You know, and then I'll 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 have my, my my coffee, go to the gym, work out. I have self education, personal development for about an hour, hour and a half. Then then I come here, come home, and I'll have a freezing cold shower. Now the freezing, still. yeah, still the freezing cold shower has to last for a, a minimum of five minutes. <coughs> now, you people will laugh about the freezing cold shower, but the thing is with the freezing cold shower, what it does, it it gets you out of your comfort zone, and it programs your mind to do things out of discomfort and it also gets you hyper focused and it's it's great for so many other things mm -hmm. but it's difficult to do every morning like I don't, I don't look forward to it i don't look forward to drinking my apple cider vinegar i don't look forward to running 10 to 15 k's you know like it's 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 one of those things where your body adapts to it but you're mm -hmm. constantly out of your comfort zone and it you know that that's the only way you're going to improve. That's right. right? Yeah. And if you can do that seven days a week, so a lot of people say, "All right, I work out every day. I um, you know, I, I diet really hard every day. I, I, you know, I I do self education every day. I do it seven days a week, right? And I don't say that to brag, but I say that because that's the reason why I have the knowledge that I have mm -hmm. and the experience that I have, the team that I have." The culture that I've built within all of my businesses comes down to my rituals. Now, last week, Mark, you said that you had a you had a comment where, you know, everything kind of fell over, right? Mm. And that's because all of those rituals went out the window. Yep. We were sick. We couldn't perform them. Mm -hmm. So then the negativity started coming in. Little problems started turning into big Bigger problems. problems right. I couldn't even, you know, call my team to give them advice, right? Because I was, I was, I was so sick. And... It's just, it's really, really important to have those rituals and improve on them every single day. Mm -hmm. Sarah, you're, um, you're one that, that has 
formed rituals and and sometimes you adjust them over time what about you with your um rituals are they have they been around for a long time or is that something you've built over the last couple of years no it's something new because my duties have changed um within my industry and what is expected of me um so i have weekly rituals i also have monthly rituals and then my daily rituals so um my daily ones for me i know everyone goes on they do i also do personal development daily um i make sure i do that whilst i'm exercising and if i'm not exercising i'll put on something whilst i'm doing my makeup or something like that so that gets done regardless um and then social media i include as my daily ritual definitely mm. i do a lot of social media daily and i make sure that if i know that i'm going to be busy on say a wednesday or a thursday when the salon is open till late i'll back up the content in my phone so that it's ready to go for so the when you day. say social media what do you exactly so do scheduling what? posts and making sure that i'm creating different things so whether it's a picture an image or a video a tutorial whatever it is mm-hmm. i make sure that they're lined up and ready to go so that if i am busy i have enough content to last me through the week but it has to be daily and it has to be at certain times and it has to be constant otherwise i'm going to get lost mm. that that's forgotten that's interesting that you say that <coughs> you you put time aside for social media because I, as you guys know like i've only just started even just doing my stories and now i start putting aside you know like 20 minutes half an hour a day to to spend on it yeah um you know how how important do you think it is in terms of your engagement and, and what you've achieved out of, because you, you do a lot, right? right. Like you do, you've probably got, I don't know, 30 stories to the point where I don't even look at them anymore because there's so many so of them. So many. Right? <laughs> but, but like, you know, you've got a lot of them. But since, since you've been doing that and you've been consistent with it, what has it done for work? And for, what has it done for, for business? So it's given people a sense of who I am because um, it's really hard to give people a sense of who you are via an image. And, you know, at this point in life, everyone can post an image of something and it can look like it's your work, but people don't get a sense of how you achieved it and your personality, if you'd mesh well with their personality, um, if you're the kind of person that they'd want to be around, if you're the kind of person that they want to give their money to, if you're the kind of person they want to do business with. Um, So by... You know, showing people the other side to me that isn't just work related. It's going and tapping into my personal life. It's tapping into the goofy side of me because I'm a bit crazy. Like all of these sides and people are now interacting with me and engaging with me and telling me like, wow, I love that. Like, so it's, it's really rewarding having people, you know, recognize you as a person. um, And then, yeah just reaching out to you, you forget, you forget how many people are actually watching mm-hmm. um, until they give you these little comments and, you know, they're really nice comments until they give them to you. You're like, oh, wow, I posted that, just posting it. But so many people have watched it, so many people have commented it. So What about haters? You got, Hate, you got I, many haters? I have a great following on social media. I, like, the haters are silent haters. I'm sure people hate me. I'm sure they do. But you can click unfollow if you do. I don't mind. Um, but they're going to always be silent haters. Because no one's going to stand up to you and go, oh, I don't like you. Like, I don't, I don't like what you're doing. But there are people that are going to be mm-hmm. negative behind my back and go, oh, look at her. Who does she think she is? Like, it's probably she's, happening right now. she's got 6,000 followers and she's doing all these things. It's like, well, yeah, I have to do these things in order to... Have you got 6,000 followers? Yeah, at the moment. It's so <laughs> small in, in comparison to, you know, in what you classify as Instagram famous. <laughs> I am definitely bottom of the barrel. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite on Zara level. But, um, yeah, like, you have to do these daily rituals in order to grow that following. It has to be consistent. Like, people are going to forget you if you're not on top of that so mm. i make sure um that i am on top of my social media that it, it is into invested into my daily ritual and then i also enforce that onto my team as well mm-hmm. to get you, them out there. you know what like uh, i must admit i look up to you with 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 your social media like I, I use your social media as an example when i'm talking to other people who i'm trying to get them to to, to do the same for their pr- profiles Industry. and in yep. their industries i go look check out um sarah from my salon she her, her social media is cracker 
right? Like you, you should follow everything that she does. <laughs> and I even go on and see, like it's, it's, it's hard for me to get inspiration for, for what I can do because it's just a totally different industry. But to see the activity consistently, day in, day out, and I guess that's what ritual's all about. It's, mm. it's not just a, a one hit wonder where you just, you know, like you do, you do social media for 10 hours in one day and then all of a sudden you forget about it for mm. two months, yeah. you know? Mm. It's consistency and yeah. it's constantly getting out there and building it into your life, building it into each day. Now, we were in a time, remember this, five years ago, <coughs> where we were like, get off social media, too much social media. Mm. Now, it's like, get on social media if you want to make a difference. We if used you want to, to build it. your business, if you want to build your profile. Hey, but if you don't want to build your profile, don't worry about it. It's okay. Mm. But get on social media, make time for it and build it into your daily rituals or your Mm. weekly rituals and you know constantly producing Uh, like you say but you have to work it into your life i think it's the it's it's the compound effect of everything that you do every single day so what i've found with social media right because i've only been on it for not even a year now i don't think it's been a year i think Uh, probably about almost a year now and he's already got top following guys (laughs) yeah so if you guys aren't following me um (laughs) Start, start yeah, start doing it because you're going you're to be missing out if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but look, with, with, with my year of being on uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram and all of that sort of thing, if I look at it now and think, okay, I start now instead of I didn't start a year ago, mm. like the, the compound effect that I've created in just the last year mm. of content and engagement and new networks and people I'm, I'm starting to do business with, to start all over again, oh my God, it's so overwhelming. Mm. So it's really important to just get on it every single day. And it doesn't have to be daily. It could be a weekly ritual. Everyone's different, right? But the, the I guess You're the key takeaway, quicker, yeah, the key takeaway is that that will compound mm. very, very fast yeah. over time. And we're not just talking about social media. I'm talking about exercise, Correct, yeah. diet, you know, um, education mm. you know uh the the there's a book that i read called the compound effect which we actually talk about quite a bit yeah, yeah. um where he talks about darren hardy who, who who's written it he talks about uh people he compares different people doing different rituals right one person that just doesn't care about what he eats and then there's the next person that you know kind of looks after his diet and he trains and he does a bit of education and basically what, what I do, right? But I'm a bit, a bit extreme. I go a bit too mm. far with it. And he does the comparisons at like 45 years old. Yeah. And you see the downhill decline of the person that doesn't really work on themselves mm. and then how far ahead the person is who, who actually works on themselves. And I spoke to someone in the gym the other day. He's actually a good friend of mine. He's 45 years old. Mm-hmm. And... He said to me, he goes, uh, when you get to your mid 40s, not many people actually train in the gym anymore because of commitments through kids and family. And, you know, they just, they slack off and, you know, it, it just, it's just natural, right? Mm-hmm. Where there's a lot of people in their early 30s, in their 20s, obviously, everyone, everyone training. Okay. But the people who have been consistent about it, he said to me, he goes, when he reaches 50, 55, that's when he's going to see the full benefits of going to the gym every single day. Because think about it, right? If a 40-year-old for the next 10 years reaches 50 and just doesn't really care about how he Mm. sort of his his health, think about the rapid decline. Mm. So the people that constantly work on themselves, constantly study, constantly educate themselves, keep learning. um, So it's not just about the body, but it's also about the mind Mm. is very, very important to, to stay alive. Yeah. Right, so Tony Robbins says, you know, progression is the key to happiness. Mm. Right, yeah. so you, you have to keep progressing, meaning keep improving. Mm. So these rituals that we're talking about, that we're telling you guys that are watching, um, I think it's it's really important that you set targets, weekly targets, monthly targets, yearly targets, whether that be physical appearance or, or weight yeah. or body fat percentage. Uh, you know how much how many books you can read uh, how many hours you can log of listening to something positive every day like it, it really you need to be able to measure it I think mm. um, you know, like for example I always try and you know I might clock an extra K or, or do a workout faster 
you know, always constantly improving. Mm, yeah, because it was funny actually. I was thinking about it this morning in my uh, daily ritual, the shower, and uh, <laughs> that was a joke. Is that your shit? That was a joke. No, 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 no. What I was thinking about was the. Um, That's. I was thinking about life. I was, I was thinking about life, and, and, and I'm not going too deep here, but it was about deep. like no, no. I was thinking, okay, you know, does it, when does it get easier? Or when does it get easier? And nothing, nothing gets easier. It's as simple as that. Like so, w- with these daily rituals. I, one thing I've always thought to myself is, okay, yeah, at the moment I haven't been consistent in going to the gym, for example, in the mornings and all that. Now I have for the last few days, but before You've been that... been consistent was, for the last few yeah, days. Yeah, but before that, <laughs> not consistent, right? And then I was like, hang on, but when when's the when am I ever going to finish? I thought, when, when is the finish date? When do you kind of hang up your little boots at the gym there's, and go, oh, that's it, no more? There's think, no finish date. There is no finish date. You know, your daily rituals are forever and they will go until the day you die. You know, like, and of course, you're not going to go lift the heaviest weight that you're lifting at 25 years of age or, or running as many kilometers. But, you know, how many inspirational people do you see that, you know, on social media, it's, it's helped to see them, um, like old people that are, you know, over 90 years of age and they're doing chin-ups and stuff like that. And you think, why can't I do that? Because they've been consistent every single day. Yeah, that's right. So you just said to us just then that you've just gone to the gym for the last three days and you're going, why is it so hard? And a lot of people do that. They go, why is it so hard? Right. But... In, in reality, mm. it, it's actually not that not, hard no. if you do it every single and it's day. And priority as well. And I do it every yeah. single day. And I tell you what, on Sunday, right, which mm. is meant to be my lazy day, I did an hour and a half of intense cardio, mm. which is, you know, a little bit more than I, what I normally do. But you know what? Like, it, it was easy mm. because I do it every single day. Mm. It's, not, it's not a chore for me. It, and it, you read a book. I, yeah, like, I, and plus I, I hit education at the same time. But... That is normal for me. People say, okay, Zah, so when I talk to people about education, right, and, I, and they go, they ask me, well, how many books do you read a month or you know, all that sort of thing? And I, like, I tell them and they don't believe me. Mm. You know, I tell them I, I sometimes read four books a month, which is a book a week. Well, they don't believe you because it's too unachievable for them. But I never started out like that. I started out reading like 10 pages mm. a day. You know, before I started like getting tired and the, the words go blurry, you know what I mean? But, you know, when, when that's taken me years and years and years, like I'm 34 now, I, I started on the personal development path of probably, I think around the 30, the 30 year mark. Mm-hmm. So it's been four years of hardcore learning, education. Um, and that's when I did my, my body transformation. So like I really took my, my training seriously. Uh, so, you know. I had to learn through a little bit of pain and trauma to, to kick me up the ass to, to, to get going, but I haven't stopped. Mm-hmm. And like you said, you, if, you will never stop. That's right. Yeah. And things get easier and easier and easier. It, yeah. And then what, what, what happens is that you get faced with a challenge, and then once you get faced with that challenge, it's no longer a challenge anymore. Mm. So if you can incorporate these daily rituals, weekly rituals, monthly rituals, yearly rituals, of constantly challenging yourself, but every single day. That's right. Don't yes. ever fall off the wagon. And a lot of people listening will probably say, well, you know, I, I want to have my weekends off. That's fine. Like every, everyone's different, right? I don't want my weekends off. I want to work on myself every single day because I'm obsessed with what I do, mm. right? And people might point and laugh <coughs> and say, oh, that's silly, you know, Zaz too much. But you know what? Like, I am too much. I'm in this position because of these daily rituals. I can live the life that I want because of my daily rituals, right. right? So I've got choices. Um, and a lot of people don't have those choices because they can't <coughs> commit to mm-hmm. those rituals. That's right, they don't give themselves that opportunity. Jade, how hard do you find it, and, and this is for both you and Sarah actually, with- um, It's a girly st- thing. Yeah, sticking to the, with, the, with the salon, sticking to daily rituals, like is it an easy thing now? Are there daily rituals within the salon? Um, or uh, is, yes. it, is it always changing? Is it and, and is it hard to hold down and do every single day? I think for, there's two parts to this, I think. Mm. For, as a business, this business has become more and more successful as the years go on. So this business is a very different business to what it used to be even one year, two years, three years, six years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a different businesswoman than I was one, two, three, six years ago. Mm. So the rituals are sharper and sharper. Yep. I think when I've tightened up rituals in my life, my personal life, very similar to what Zah does. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the same thing as the vinegar, the, you know, the 10 kilometers, the cold showers, like I'm just the female version. <laughs> but 
they naturally, what has happened is it transfers unconsciously, it transfers into your into your business, mm. into your into your career, yeah. into every aspect of your life. So you find that it has a ripple effect. So I didn't go out there and actively say, okay, um, I'm gonna I have to improve this area and this area and this area of mm. my life. It's it had a ripple effect. Of course, yeah. unconsciously. So yeah, the the, the salon is ex- extremely successful salon, mm. and that's because of a number of things. But I can we can definitely put it down to rituals. I can definitely say i can speak for sarah there are things that they do every we do every single monday yep. we do specific things on tuesdays we do things on fridays saturdays sundays when the salon's not open just so this salon is successful mm-hmm. and that's you know our operational processes are really tight it looks like a cool sexy fun place to be and it really is but a mm. lot goes into it yeah it's blood sweat and tears from both of us, Sarah, more than anything. Yeah, so when I first started, um, everything wasn't set out for me and um, I had to kind of find what worked and then I realised that if I'm not told things, it wasn't working and that was just my personality. It just, I specifically needed things written out for me, kind of dumbed down in point form in order for me to embed it in my head and then become natural and that's okay i didn't expect it to come natural and for everyone listening it might not come natural straight away you might need to write it down so you are reminded okay this is what i have to do this is what i have to do and this is what i have to do so that when you do it week in and week out it becomes second nature and it just yeah it happens so um that's how i started out and to the point don't get me wrong there's times that i still forget things and then i have other members of my team to remind me which is good and vice versa I do the same with my team if they're ever to forget anything um, we just make sure that at least someone is always doing these rituals whether we're busy or not but in saying that like speaking from for Sarah as a leader Sarah's got these daily rituals that I know personally that she does every day mm-hmm. because I see it on social media yeah. and um, we're extremely close and so I know what she does. I know that she goes for her walks along the bay every morning and she clears her head. She does personal development. I know this because we talk about it mm. unconsciously and she's like, yeah, yeah, I know that person. I, you know, watch this and watch that. And it's amazing because we, sh- we're on this journey. We're all on this journey together and it's really beautiful. But she unconsciously <coughs> transfers that energy and those expectations of herself into her team. Yeah. So the whole team... Is lifted it, up. It, it's it's all about the environment, isn't it? Because daily rituals can be a bad ritual as well. Like mm. so, for example, like I know I know people who they finish work at three o'clock and they'll go straight to the pub and drink six schooners, right? That to me, that's a bad bad yeah. ritual. Mm. Um, people, you know, will go through drive through Maccas and that's that's what they eat, you know, as a late lunch. That's their their ritual, and that's that's a bad ritual, right? Mm. And um, it it what so it can be good or bad. Right, I think what the girls are trying to say is it takes discipline, mm-hmm. right, to perform these rituals, and it's important to surround yourself with others yes. who are performing similar types of rituals mm-hmm. that can transfer down the down the line to everyone else that we're trying to influence. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't hang around people who excessively drink, mm-hmm. right? Because I don't want to be around that, right? I don't hang around people who take drugs. Because I don't want to be around that. Um, you know, I hang around other people who also train every single day. Yep. I hang around other people who also read every day. Like, you know, they educate themselves every day. I hang around other people who are striving to to be successful. And it doesn't have to be property or, or business. or It's just in, in anything in life. So if you surround yourself with those people... You all hold yourself accountable, mm. right? Like I know yeah, I hold you guys accountable for, for what you guys do. Mm. And if you guys, you know, perform a ritual that's bad, like I'm going to be pretty honest with you, like, and you guys are probably going to be pretty honest with me as well because mm. we're all on the same team. That's right. So it's important to surround yourself with other people who uh, are on the same journey as you because they're going to be performing the, the rituals that you need to be p- performing. Mm. And we're talking about the silent mentors all the time. Yeah. Right? We're talking about silent haters before. Now we're talking about silent mentors. Study them. 
we now have the power of the internet where you can you can study uh, the, the the successful habits of those who have made it in life where you want to be. And not only that as well, I think Gary Vee posted something the other day that really sung to me. It's like, don't watch what I, like, don't watch what I do and envy it. Go and do it yourself. Yeah. You're actually getting nowhere from watching what I do and not implementing it yourself. So it's kind of like, go and study these silent mentors but it's not enough yeah. to just take it don't in consume. And, and don't go, this mm. is what they do, this is what they do. Unless you're actually doing it, you don't get no it. benefits yeah. from don't, it. Don't just consume. You've got you to you gotta produce, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, and so many people, they'll, they'll consume. Because we live in a consumer world, right? We, 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 it's designed yeah. to yes. distract us, yes. right? Yes. You've got, you know, the Kardashians on, on, on the TV. You've got advertising constantly of shit that you're not even supposed to really spend your money on on disposable items that don't really return you anything on investment that's right right? there are so many distractions there's so much noise Mm. and it's easy to get consumed by all of these these distractions that end up uh you end up doing bad rituals Mm. right because it's easy to sleep in and maybe you know watch tv then go to the gym in the morning right because the tv's got something that that consumes you Mm -hmm. so what happens is that these other things become the master of you and you don't become the master of everything else when you can become the master of everything else you can control everything right so me with with the power of my rituals what it does it, it allows me to be the master of everything nobody controls me right nothing controls me it's like when people smoke, right? I used to smoke like when I was a kid. And a lot of people, what happens is that the cigarettes become the master of them. That's right, big time. Right? Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. If I was to have a cigarette now, it would be magnificent. <laughs> I would love it, right? Because I know what it, I know what it feels like. Mm. The nicotine hits you and it's just, it just gives you this rush, mm. right? Especially if you haven't had one for so long. However, I can master that. I can master those cigarettes. If that was in front of me now, I'd go, well, I, I, I don't really mm. want it. I don't, I don't need it, right? Yep. So I've become the master of that, right? Mm. But for the weak that don't perform these daily rituals, everything else becomes the master of them and they become consumed. And they become consumed in, in many different parts of their life, don't they? Whether that be on an emotional level, physical level. Financial, level. you know, people, yeah, yeah. people get consumed by credit card debt, for example. Mm. Right, it's it's very easy. Banks are giving out credit cards, twenty percent interest, twenty one percent interest. It's it's robbery. Mm. But you know what? They can do it, right? They They're lending money out for twenty one percent interest. All these kids are getting access after pay, zip pay, whatever these things are called, mm. and they're smashing these credits, right? And what's happening is that no one can buy a home yeah. because their their credit file's gone, mm-hmm. right? Overwork. Because they wanted to buy a one thousand dollar dress or a two thousand dollar handbag, right? That's not going to last long, no, it's right? Not. And they become consumed. So these days, I know we've kind of digressed, but the rituals, they what they do for the body and the mind to the power to, they give it. Yeah, to to help you master anything that you want to do in life. Like I wake up every single morning going, I can do whatever I want because I have the control, full control over my life. Mm. I have business stresses. I have so many different stresses in my personal life as well. But you know what? Like, I can handle them, mm. you know? And that's, that's what Bruce Lee says. What he says, don't, don't dream for an easy life. Yeah. Dream yes. for the strength to endure a difficult life. Goes back to I think uh, that's not word for word, right? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, but that's, yeah. it sounds kind of along the lines of <laughs> It's something Bruce Lee would say, <laughs> you know, so, but it's, it's true. Yeah. If you can train yourself to endure a difficult life, then life will be easy, mm. right? But too many people just dream for that easy life. Mm-hmm. One thing I wanted to bring up as well with, um, it's more of a tip for our listeners, is, is putting our, the rituals together. So one thing you guys do, and Sarah, you do it in the morning as well, is your fitness plus personal development. Mm-hmm. So you've got the access to the, the TV screens and the treadmills and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and you watch videos when you go for a walk or something. I would assume, yeah. and you're doing two things at once. And a lot, uh, like one thing, I mean, when I would have started last year, and you changed my whole mindset on on what not on, on on everything, I should say. 
I was like, all right, I've got to designate time here, time there, read a little bit of book there, watch a video there. But it's like, hang on, you can do like three, four, five different, maybe not that many, but a couple of different things in the one hit. Be proactive that way, but still do it consistently every day. Mm. How do you guys go with it in the morning? Like, is it easy or? Well, at the together? moment, I have my beautiful partner that wakes me up and he's my PT and he gets me ready for, you know, my ritual of training. Um, and then also when he picks me up, he'll have a podcast playing. So it has no relevance to my actual industry. It's boxing related, but I actually get tips from listening to mm. boxing related podcasts, which is really funny. Um, but what's well, positive? It's, it's positive. all positive stuff. It's so positive. Yeah. And but it's subconsciously happening as well. When I say yeah. that, like obviously it's playing and you know what's going on, but yeah. you're just getting in the car, going home. Yeah. You're not going, all right, stop everything. We need to play a podcast <laughs> and listen in. It's just happening. Two just things there. at once. Yeah. yeah. So I sit in the car and we, that's my, you know, second bit of personal development for the day. So mm. without planning on it, mm. which is great. <laughs> Well, we do we do that as well. Like yeah. as soon as we wake up, we'll we'll, we'll turn it's on, on the TV. It's yeah, on the straight screen. straight away. We'll have it. We used to you know put music on back in the day, but now we we've we're immersed in it. We're, we used we're, to put fifty on. We've got um, <laughs> you know we've got something positive. It could be Les Brown, Eric Thomas, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. It's something positive where it just gets us started, and we might not even be listening to it. It's mm. just on in the background. We're immersed it in it. But I think one of the the most important rituals that we haven't talked about today is which. I must admit, it's one of the rituals that I overlook, but everyone needs to do it, is perform gratitude. Hmm, that's true. First first thing when you wake up, you should be performing gratitude. And I must admit, I am guilty of not doing it because you just forget because life takes over. Really quickly. And you the stresses take over and all you're worried about is getting to the, you know, through your day right You're not wrong and it's and, and it's so easy to overlook but it's so important because if you can perform gratitude every day and always be grateful nothing mm. nothing will stress you out i think one thing to help you perform gratitude day in day out if you feel like life just takes over as soon as you wake up mm. Put, leave your phone aside for at least 30 minutes, the first 30 minutes of the day and the last 30 minutes before mm. you go to sleep. I'm guilty of it as well. And I notice that when I do touch my phone either side, morning and night, everything takes over because what's on your phone, emails, text messages, mm. work, businesses, social media. And for me, for us, social media isn't like consuming, consuming, consuming. Social media is like business, business, business. So your mind's racing a million miles an hour then you would like to get into discussions about things no you need to shut all of that noise off mm. the only way you're going to do it is to put your phone aside turn your alarm off and then leave the room yeah you Go know to the bathroom it's it's um getting back to the gratitude part which is you know it's 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 it that's probably why jade that people get forget to do it because we, we look at our phones and then all of a sudden we, we, we're thinking about emails, <laughs> emails, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. We've got so many different things, right? Yeah. And you just get distracted and you, for, you forget about why you actually live your life. And not to mention, like you say, with that as well, we, I'm, I'm big for it and I have been and, and you guys have pulled me up on it before is comparing yourself to others. You know, that that's so hard to, to do, uh, to give yourself a form of gratitude when you're going, oh, look at this guy, look at that girl, and they're doing this, they're doing that, you know what I mean? It's, it's so, it's a killer, it, and it can actually kill yep. you, you know what I mean? And yep. that's, that's a very, I like that, that point I, you bring up about gratitude. I stop doing that, looking at what other people are doing, because then you never, like, the moment that you stop looking what other people are doing, you actually realise that the things that you are doing are truly you, <coughs> and not a copy of somebody else. Mm. Um, I think it, it, it takes a while to push past that barrier though, Sarah, like it's, it took me a while to stop comparing myself to others because I thought that's what you do in a competitive environment. So I was I was wrong, mm. right? Like it's, it wasn't the right thing to do. But I used to look at others and go, not so much envy them, but then think, okay, I should be at a better, at a, at a higher level by now if this other person is at a certain level that I'm trying to chase. Yeah. And I think comparing yourself to others, yeah, it's it's it. It can get you down, but you can also use it as a motivational tool, mm. right? And I think a lot of people who compare themselves to others, they envy and they hate and they become jealous, right? Mm. Where 
what, what you should do is turn that into motivation. So if I see someone that's doing really, really well, like I will look to them as motivation. I won't so much compare myself to them, but I'll look to them and go, okay, what have they done so I can sort of achieve what they've achieved? Mm. I'm really big on like not just looking from the outside and wondering, actually going in there and asking. I'm not shy to ask somebody that I look up to. Oh, we know you're not sure. How, <laughs> how did you get here? What did you do? Ask for their advice. Because you'd be really surprised. We don't live in a world anymore where it's so, so competitive and people don't want to share their knowledge. People are proud of what they know. They're proud of the knowledge that they've built up over the years and they should want to share share their knowledge. And if they don't, it shows you what kind of person that they are. And then I wouldn't look up to those people anymore. I think um, Reece, something really cool happened recently at the salon where someone that Sarah really looks up to... Um, paid a visit to the girls at the salon and spent like two hours with you. Yeah, and it was really, really unexpected actually. Um, her name is Natalie Ann um, and we are going to be stocking her product soon. Um, and it was a really easy decision um, to do that because she came into our salon and we expected nothing but for her to talk about her product and it was basically the absolute opposite she inspired us um she came and gave us advice and little tips and i was actually really grateful because i'd met her in the past like a while ago and then re-meeting her again just um you know you see people on social media and you don't you can get a sense of what they are but you're not really going to know how they are in a normal one-on-one situation Mm -hmm. so having her come into our salon um, and then just exceed my expectations of what I thought she was coming for was actually really, really beautiful. So it's authentic. Authenticity yeah. is rare, and I think so. When we receive authenticity, it's beautiful, mm. and um, there aren't a lot of people. And I think that needs to be a ritual as well, where people perform authenticity yeah. throughout, whether it be social media, their personal brand, or just in everyday living. You know, so mm. many. I mean. We're in the eastern suburbs. There's, let's face it, there's a lot of fake people around here, right? And a lot of people are probably not going to like that. But it's the truth, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think being real, authentic, being raw is actually a rare commodity these days, yeah. but, a, but a valuable commodity, you know? That, that can get you so far in life. Like, be humble, you know? Like, uh, be real. That's what people want now, you know? People don't want the, you know, the puffed out ego and all of that sort of thing. Like yeah. that's that's gone, you know. People 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 are not into that. I don't think people are ever into it yeah, anyway. It's, like it's definitely and it, I think there was a stage where when social media first came out and people were big on it, you know, Massive like it, flaunting yeah. their wealth, flaunting, yeah. you know, the people that they knew and all of that sort of thing and it's it, it's it's no good. Like people want like why do you think reality T V is so popular now? Because people want to see the real thing yeah. stories yeah. for example yeah. instagram stories and snapchats are, are so popular because it's real footage of what's happening right now mm. um you know facebook live you know it's real so i think being part of your daily ritual should be you know just being real being true to yourself and you know exactly what sarah said you know be, be authentic mm. that's the most fun part i think guys we're going to wrap up soon but before we do let's go through some tips from all of you Mm -hmm. um for our listeners out there um for daily rituals and and let's start with beginner tips and stuff that leads to the advance like what you guys do so zah i'll start with you and what's your few couple of tips my first tip is always start with exercise right and it sounds very very basic but I, i want it's it's the beginner's tip Always start with exercise, always get the body moving because as soon as you get the body move, moving, uh, your brain takes over as well. Mm. And then the brain gets those endorphins, that good energy, mm. um, and everything can spread from there. Wake up early, start moving, do some sort of exercise, even if it's just a walk for like 20 minutes, it'll change your life because that will spiral into so many different good habits, yep. right? You'll start eating better, you'll start sleeping better, you'll start wanting to learn more because you'll, you, you'll get some progression in your mind. You'll start looking better mm. because you know you, you need to exercise to look good. Uh, you'll get more confidence, like so much stuff stems from exercise. Mm. And I actually owe uh, you know training and exercise to my personal development journey because you know, I, I did my body transformation yeah. and in back when I was about 30 mm-hmm. and I did it purely for aesthetics. 
But then when I got to the point where I wanted to get to, I was like, hang on, this has done so much for my mind. I want to keep going. Mm. And here I am, you know, four years later. So I always start with exercise. Fantastic. I would probably say planning and preparation. So you can plan out all this cool stuff that you're going to do tomorrow um, and, you know, starting from where you want to start. But if you don't have time and if you don't allow that time to be able to do that before your obligations start, so you have to get to work, you have to get, you know, on public transport enough, leave enough time to get to work, to get to where you need to be. Mm. All that stuff takes precedence over your daily rituals. They absolutely will and you'll forget about them and you'll mm. never start them. Mm. So get up, you know, set your alarm an hour early, half an hour early just to start mm. and start, just start somewhere. Yeah. If you don't start somewhere, I know these daily rituals that, that Zah performs every single day, that I perform every single day, um, you know, we've been doing it for years. So it's, it's going to, you can't, you need to start somewhere and build up to that, build up to your desired level of whatever you want to do. Um, but allowing enough time. We've you all been there where we don't have enough time to do anything. Yeah, you can't, you can't get to our level of what we're doing. And I'm sure there's other people out there that, that doing are more stuff. hardcore than us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you can't get to that level overnight. Yep. Like you've got to work towards it. But once you do get to that certain level, mm -hmm. man, you, you can take over the world. You can mm -hmm. do whatever you want. And I, I tell everyone that, right? And people, people might laugh at it, but I actually feel it inside here. I can take over the world, mm. right? And that's what I want you guys to feel like as well. You know, yeah, yeah. that's it's, it's very important that you have that self confidence. Go on, Sarah. Can you when talk you, that? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> when you're starting out, go back to basics. Write it down so you don't forget. Write it down and write it down every single day. Write your goals down. Write what you have to do for the day down, and follow it and follow it and follow it till it becomes routine. What's your tip, Marcus? He has none. God. Can't top that. <laughs> the shower. Yeah, have a shower every day. <laughs> <laughs> Eat food at Eat lunchtime. Food. Yeah. Well, you know, I actually do set reminders for that. Don't stuff. you walk? Don't you have a walking your dog ritual? I have to. Yeah. Even if I get home late, I have to take him for a walk because he's been locked up in the yard yeah. all day. But you've also got your pub ritual as well. You just yeah, need happy uh, hour. Yeah, so <laughs> make sure you go to the pub. <laughs> Get to the pub at five o'clock because it's happy hour. It'll make you happy. All right, guys. No, I actually don't have anything besides what you guys said. They're, they're pretty good tips. Um, <laughs> but that was a that was a really good podcast. I think that I that enjoyed provided, it. Yeah, for a lot of Thanks for coming in, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Do you want me next Thanks week? Thanks for coming. <laughs> I think we might have a break. Happy to blow not, in, guys. Happy matter. to blow on in. Maybe maybe Jade and I will be sick and <laughs> you can come back in. <laughs> <laughs> I might. Yeah. That might be an accident. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Subscribe. guys. Happy Easter. See you guys. Bye. bye. See you guys. Peace.